What is up guys, it is Joe here from Joe Talks Wrestling and today we are going to be talking about uh, a topic that I've actually been wanting to talk to you guys about for a while, uh, the last couple of years actually, I just, I never actually brought it forward because there was still hope in my mind but after what happened at TLC, um, I am really starting to give up on this concept. So today we are talking about should WWE scrap the money in the bank contract? Let's get right into it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So the money in the bank has been something that has been around since 2005 for 15 years now. And it has seen many amazing moments in WWE. Don't get me wrong. The moments that the money in the bank contract has brought us have been top tier. The best one that comes to mind is when Seth Rollins cashed in his money in the bank on Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 31. Uh, we've got Edge's two cash-ins, CM Punk's two cash-ins. And... It is genuinely something that is considered to be one of the highlights every year in WWE. But for the last few years, I want to say, I'm going to say since 2017, the money in the bank has just been on a slow decline. Now, what this is because is back before 2012, I believe it was, every single person that cashed in the money in the bank briefcase went on to become a world champion which meant the money in the bank was essentially something that if you won you were guaranteed to become the top champion in the WWE the money in the bank was always something that was used to put uh, normally traditionally what it was mainly invented for was to take someone that was in like the mid card or the upper mid card and turn them into a star turn them into a main eventer guys like CM Punk Guys like The Miz, guys like Dolph Ziggler, all right, that one didn't really work out too well, but you know what I mean. It takes them guys that aren't normally like your traditional top guy and it elevates them to that position by giving them a world championship match. So 2012, for whatever reason, John Cena was the one that unhooked the briefcase at Money in the Bank and he went on to fight CM Punk at Raw 1000 for the WWE Championship. Now, Big Show actually got involved in that match, causing a disqualification, meaning John Cena was the first man ever to lose his Money in the Bank cash-in. That was then followed by, a year later, Damian Sandow cashing in on John Cena and losing. So now we've had two people. We haven't had a successful cash-in. But at this point, ladies and gentlemen, you have to remember that there was two briefcases. So we had the Raw briefcase and the SmackDown briefcase. There wasn't just one Mr. Money in the Bank. Now... I forgot to mention, Money in the Bank used to be something that happened at WrestleMania. It wasn't its own pay-per-view. Uh, 2010, we actually had three Mr. Money in the Banks. We had Jack Swagger at WrestleMania, Miz, and then Kane. So, it used to just be uh, this thing at WrestleMania, just to bump up the card. You know, I still personally think it should be a WrestleMania-exclusive event. We shouldn't have a Money in the Bank pay-per-view. But... It used to be at WrestleMania, then it got its own pay-per-view, and because it was Raw and SmackDown, when it got its own pay-per-view, there was two Money in the Bank ladder matches, meaning there would be a Raw briefcase and a SmackDown briefcase. So if someone failed the Raw briefcase, you've still got in your mind, oh, well, we've still got the SmackDown one, we're still going to see a Money in the Bank successful cash-in this year. Now, that was thrown out of the window in 2014 when they introduced the gold Money in the Bank briefcase, a.k.a. the best Money in the Bank briefcase, and that was then won by guys like Seth Rollins, Sheamus, Dean Ambrose, guys that, well, Sheamus had already been a main eventer, but, you know, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, they're still, like, struggling for that main event position. They both hadn't been world champions yet, fresh out of the shield. And, um, yeah, that Money in the Bank contract brought them into the main event. So 2017 was when Baron Corbin literally won this exact briefcase. This is a custom-made briefcase that I made in 2017. It's not the official WWE shop one. This is, like, a basically just homemade by me. Uh, but it's the blue briefcase that Baron Corbin won. That's what it's based off. And he lost his cash-in on Jinder Mahal. So that means we now have three unsuccessful cash-ins. The following year... Bearing in mind, 2017, guys, was the point where I said it started to go downhill. Following year... Braun Strowman wins the money in the bank. Cool. Why not? I mean, he's already been in the world championship uh, matches, but he'd never actually won. So I was like, you know, I, I was hoping it would have been someone like Finn Balor, uh, Kevin Owens. But no, it was uh, Braun Strowman. But, you know, we can't complain until he lost his cash in in a Hell in a Cell match on a no contest. A no contest in a Hell in a Cell. What? But yeah, it happened, believe it or not. No contest, Strowman loses the briefcase. Next year, Brock Lesnar wins. 
weren't even in the match, was he? So Brock Lesnar's decided to come, come out uh, and beat Mustafa Ali, I think was the last person on the ladder, knock him off and uh, take down the briefcase and he won money in the bank. Cashed in successfully, finally. For the first time in two years, we have a successful cash in. But it was by Brock Lesnar, someone that, that doesn't need the money in the bank at all. Then that brings us to this year, 2020. The money in the bank, believe it or not, I'm actually like, I, I agree with this. It's meant to be a surprise. It's, it's almost like a Royal Rumble winner where anyone in that match stands a good chance of winning. And Otis was the one that won the Money in the Bank briefcase this year until he lost it to The Miz at Hell in a Cell, which I do not mind. Uh, because I love The Miz, and The Miz is another guy that's in the upper mid card, needs to be pushed to the main event again, because I've been I've been saying for years I want a WWE Championship run with The Miz again. But the reason I'm making this video, and it's been five minutes of basically just me bringing you up to speed with the history of the Money in the Bank for the last few years, the reason I'm making this video is because what happened at TLC. The Miz cashed in his Money in the Bank unsuccessfully. Meaning, guys, it has been four years since we have seen an unexpected, or I say unexpected, Dean Ambrose was to be expected, but a Money in the Bank winner that deserved to win cash in successfully. It's been four years since we saw a Money in the Bank winner being someone that was involved in the Money in the Bank ladder match, actually in the match, win the money in the bank guys has just been slowly going down and down and down for me uh, i look forward to it every year of course i do but everything from the design of the briefcase when they when they introduced the green briefcase this thing disgusting thing that was when i was like Mm, that doesn't look good because i personally think the money in the bank is like holding a like a temporary championship you know the gold briefcase, this one, beautiful. You know, that's something that I would happily carry that around an airport if I was a wrestler. Um, but ever since 2016, it's just not been the same. And I don't know if that's just for me, but you guys as well, are you feeling it? I think, should WWE scrap the money in the bank? No is my answer. No, I don't think they should, but it needs drastic changes. And here is what I would personally do. The Money in the Bank briefcase for a start. Switch it back to the gold one. If you're not going to do two ladder matches for Raw and SmackDown respectively, you're just going to have one for both brands. Have the gold briefcase. Bring that thing back. Two, scrap the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. It doesn't need to exist. Now, ever since Undertaker lost the WrestleMania streak, uh, the, the streak was always something at WrestleMania that you would look forward to. It was always something that would be, oh, there's going to be a, a match for the streak. Someone's going to try and break the streak. Now, Undertaker had matches at WrestleMania after that, but they never quite felt the same. And WrestleMania now, considering there is no Undertaker, you don't have a money in the bank. You don't have a, a streak match. You need something big. And I'm not talking the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Throw the money in the bank ladder match back on the WrestleMania card. So, every WrestleMania, eight guys, eight girls fight for the money in the bank contract. So, yes, there is still going to be two Money in the Bank matches at WrestleMania. But having said that, I see why a pay-per-view does make sense. But I genuinely think it would be better on WrestleMania. Maybe just have the, uh, the men's to open the show or the women's to open the show. And then later on, like right later on in the card, have the men's one. But having two matches does complicate things because... You don't want your WrestleMania card to be filled with money in the bank. So this one is a tricky one. I've, I've already, I said a minute ago, scrap the money in the bank pay-per-view. But when you come to think about it properly with the two matches, that's probably not the most efficient thing for WWE to do. However, I would love to see the money in the bank ladder match back on the WrestleMania card. Next up, it needs to be an opportunity and in my mind, this is just a random idea that I think would be cool. The Money in the Bank ladder match is exclusively 
for men and women that have not yet held the world championship. So guys like The Miz, guys like Dolph Ziggler, they can no longer compete. But that means we're not going to get any more money in the bank participants and winners such as Randy Orton, John Cena, Brock Lesnar. That's not going to happen anymore because they've already held it. Meaning it is specifically a match for someone new. Someone that hasn't yet held the championship to compete and win. And then finally... Just make it so they're cash-in successful. We've had enough of seeing in cash-in failed attempts, guys. We want to see some successful cash-in attempts. We don't want to see any more failed ones. Uh, I think I said we don't want to see any more successful ones a second ago. Uh, meant failed ones. But yeah, they're my three things. It's not that hard, WWE. You've literally, in my mind, I'm, you know, the money in the bank is something I look at now and go, ah, uh, okay. Well, so-and-so is Mr. Money in the Bank. I'm not excited like I used to be. But you, WWE, you can bring that excitement back. You just have to rethink Money in the Bank. And just add some different things. Maybe do the thing where it's only future world champions. What do you guys think about that? Because that's like my best idea, in my opinion, for the Money in the Bank. But we're just going to have to wait and see what happens next year, aren't we? Money in the Bank. Should WWE scrap it? I don't think so. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. I've been Joe from Joe's Thrust and you guys have been awesome. Please be sure to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.